I am glammed up in quarantine because it's Thursday, which means it's Kardashian day. Shout out Anna Blake, my Kardashian watching buddy. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing a bookshelf tour because I just organized all of my bookshelves. I can do a room tour for you guys in another video. If you'd like that, just comment down below or like this video if you want more videos like this. I'm not really sure how this is gonna do on my channel because I haven't really made a book related video yet. Basically, I'm just gonna take you guys through all the shelves and give you some recommendations. A lot of this stuff is YA because I did most of my reading in middle school and early high school and then like life got hectic and I also have my instruments up here so I'll show you guys that too. Before we get started go ahead and click subscribe, like this video, you can tap the little bell if you want to get notified when I post. Alright, so I have two bookshelves in my room so this is the first one and this will be the second one so I'm going to start over here. But on the top shelf, well right above it, I have my radio and then I have a bunch of CDs from when I was in middle school. I don't really buy CDs anymore now that we have Spotify and all that. I have a couple of bookmarks right under my radio and then to the side I have all of my gardening books. I have a book about plants in Ireland because I was there over the summer and then I have a couple of magazines. I would definitely recommend this bottom one, The Garden Wisdom and Know How. It has a lot of really good information in it and also The Backyard Homestead Kitchen Know How. That's really good. So I'm just going to do this row by row. I tried to keep this bookshelf with most of my darker colored books because before I organized them, they were really mixed up. In this first little cube, I have a lot of Cassandra Clare books. This is my favorite YA series that I've ever read. So I have all of the Mortal Instruments series right here. I also have The City of Bones in French. My mom got that for me when she was in Canada. And I have this little figurine of the Empire State Building that I got with my uncle in New York. In this second cubicle, I have, this is the Bane Chronicles, you can't really see it, but I have a couple of standalone books. I have the Dark Artifices series, which I don't really like as much. Like, I like all of her books, but it's just not one of my favorite set of characters. This is the Last Hours series, and this is one of my favorites. And then you can't really see because the angle, but these are all of my Harry Potter books. I also have two little pop figures, Wonder Woman and Chewie. I have a couple other books right here, and I also have the first two Harry Potter books in French that my mom also got me from Canada. All right, moving down to the second shelf, I have a couple more Cassandra Clare books here because there's just so many. I have this picture of me and one of my besties, Adam, at graduation. This series, literally also one of my favorite series ever. I have The Warrior Heir, a different series by the same author, and I didn't really like that book as much, but I really surprised myself when I liked the series, so I would highly recommend this. This is just more dystopia type stuff. I really liked The Last Mamsara. That was a good book. I like this series too. And then over here you can't really see it just because of the angle but this is where I have a bunch of old journals, books on like healing and spells and all nonsense that type of stuff. I have like a deck of tarot cards, some crystals, all that spiritual things. I had a little phase. I have this book from an antique shop which is the book of the occult and fortune telling. Um, I didn't actually get to reading it, but it just is really cool and old, and I liked the vibes. So, I also have some astrology stuff on that shelf, too. Alright, moving down another shelf. In this box right here, I have all of my Vampire Academy books. I remember really liking this series. And I got a couple of a spin-off series. I didn't actually read these two, but I had them all. I just didn't really get into it as much. Over here I have the first four books of the Alchemist series. Um, this is an incredible series that I really liked, but my cousin like stole all of these books from me and so I'm working on buying them back, but it just hasn't happened yet. So there's only the first four in there. Moving on to this second shelf, I have this book right here that you can't really see is Furyborn. I never finished a lot of books I haven't finished reading. This is Legends of the Dragon Realm. 
pretty dense. This is a good read though. I liked it when I was reading it. Then I also have Three Dark Crowns and One Dark Throne. I think I've only read Three Dark Crowns. I do really like those. Eon and Iona. Then I just have a couple more random books here. I have The Warrior Heir, which I was talking about. I didn't really end up liking that book as much. And then I also have right next to it, The Art of War. Right here I have this little thing that my friend Maya got. You can't really see it because it's like... And then in this corner over here I have a bunch of old storybooks, like some of my favorite picture books from when I was a kid. This jar full of advice that people gave to me at my graduation party before I was going off to college. One thing that I also have on this shelf that I thought would be really funny to show you guys is this. This is my Pokemon Ultimate Handbook from- I got it when I was in kindergarten. I was like literally like 2000, what, 5, 2006? and it was literally falling apart. I read it so much so my neighbor had to put tape all over it. This is so old and obviously I can't ever throw this away because that's precious. <laughs> for the bottom shelf of this bookshelf I have just a bunch of stuff for school. So I have like my dictionary, some grammar books, my dad's old art history textbook from high school, a bunch of sketchbooks for drawing. I have some other notes that I've kept over the years and I have some middle school yearbooks, high school yearbooks, and my high school diploma. And then in the corner I just have a couple of random magazines and then my camera bag where I keep all the stuff and equipment for my camera. Moving on to the next bookshelf. This is all the stuff that I have on top of it. This is a Sabrina Carpenter poster from a concert of hers that I went to, I think probably my sophomore year of high school. This is my acoustic guitar. I got it for my 16th birthday. This is a guitar that I got from Santa Claus when I was probably like maybe eight or 10. This is my semi-hollow, which my friend Rishi helped me buy. I remember we used to pass, not notes in English class, but we would pass guitar magazines back and forth junior year and like circle the ones that we liked because we were trying to find me an electric guitar and we ended up getting this one on sale so it was really cool. And then I have my banjo that I got for my 16th birthday which does not get enough love and definitely needs some more attention so maybe I'll get to that in quarantine. And then behind it I have this poster of Blondie because y'all know I love Debbie Harry so I had to get her on the wall. And then over here I have just all my sunglasses and right next to it I just have my MIDI keyboard which I just got because now that I'm not at Berkeley I need access to the equipment also just for life I kind of just need to have one of these I have the cord so I can play for my laptop just laying on top because I don't want it to get mixed up in all of my other cords and stuff so I just lay it on top but it fits really nicely right here this is the top of the second bookshelf that I have this bookshelf is done long ways just because I wanted to be able to hang my guitars up so I didn't want to put it upright and just have two of my bookshelves right next to each other I'm gonna do this in sections. So these are the first two little squares we're gonna be looking at. This bookshelf is where I keep most of my more colorful books now. This is all the fun stuff. Can you see me? This is my fashion encyclopedia that my cousins got for me for my birthday one year. Then I just have a bunch of all my fashion books. I had a really big fashion phase, so I'm just keeping all of them. Then I have the Crazy Rich Asians series, which literally, I know that some of you guys have probably seen the movie. I think you really need to read the books. One of my all-time favorite book series, and it just gives the characters of the movie so much more depth. I mean, generally books do, but the way that Kevin wrote this series is so good. So I absolutely would recommend that to anyone, and I'll probably honestly reread them now. And then I have the first two books of the Lux series. I really liked the Lux. Um, it was very predictable, very easy to read, but it's like a period piece. Sometimes you just need that. And then I just have this little shot glass that I got when I was in Positano, Italy over the summer. And then moving on to this one over here, I have, this is like a nonfiction book, Rejected Princesses. is a bunch of stories about powerful women in history. Then I have all of my Sarah, whoa, all of my Sarah Dessen books right here. Those are beach reads, love stories, but I like how she she always manages to not make it cliche in a way. It never feels like you've read it before. And then I have Entwined. Don't really remember what that's about. And then The Princess Academy, which is a classic from my childhood. Love that book. It must be protected at all costs. Just the stuff I have on the shelf, I have this little Lego minifigure my sister got for me. Has a smoothie in her hand because I always drink smoothies. This car that Adam gave me because it's literally my dream car. It's like a 1950 59, 58 Cadillac 
convertible and it's pink. And then I have my pin from soccer. Just sitting right there. All right, and for these next two shelves over here, I have this series from when I was really young, but I couldn't give it up. It is so sentimental to me. And then I have this book that Isabel gave me that I haven't actually read yet. These are kind of like my to read. These are a lot of books that I haven't gotten to yet. I tried to read A Court of Flower and Roses. I did not like that book. I might just be too old to read it, so I bet if I probably read half these books now, I wouldn't like them. It is what it is. I have, you know, a couple of Game of Thrones books, some Irish ghost tales, and then I just have my Polaroid camera sitting right here on this shelf. Moving down a shelf, this is where I keep all of my classic books. So any books that I've read for school, so I have a lot of Shakespeare here. I have Pride and Prejudice. One of my favorite books, if you haven't read Pride and Prejudice, seriously. And the Handmaid's Tale, Great Gatsby. Count of Monte Cristo. This was not for school, but I love the movie so much that I really need to read this. The whole Anne of Green Gables series right there. And then on this shelf, I just have this candle that is an Aromatherapy 2's Happiness candle from Target, I believe. And my friend Anne Ross got this for me a very long time ago. And then I just have this picture of me, my sister, and my cousin Cheyenne from when we were really tiny. In this cubicle over here, I have most of the Twilight series. I don't know where Breaking Dawn went. When I find it, I'll let you guys know. I also have all of my Teen Vogue's. My magazines are very sentimental to me. I will never throw these away. I had to give a lot of my magazines away. I got rid of literally so many. It's ridiculous. I just think it's so cool to be able to look back. My first Teen Vogue that I ever bought was November of 2013. This magazine is literally seven years old. What were we doing in 2013? In 2013, we were still talking about the Hunger Games. And then I just have this little coaster that my sister painted, and then I have a shell from the beach in Florida. Moving over, these are more of my magazines right here. I'm missing a couple magazines that should be in on my bookshelves somewhere because Claire had to borrow a couple for some inspiration because she is creating a magazine. I'm very excited for her. These are all my nylons. I love nylon so much. I cannot express to you guys how much I love nylon. Cosmo. Just keeping them right now. I might get rid of these eventually mostly because they don't mean as much to me as the other magazines do. Most of this I'm keeping for sentimental value and inspiration. And Cosmo doesn't really do a lot of more photo shoot and creative stuff. And then I have all of my Seventeen magazines. The first one I have from Seventeen is June of July of 2013. Lucy Gale. That's so insane. Also, I forgot to mention these rubber duckies up here when I was doing that. This is an inside like joke in our family with my Aunt Kim and Aunt Angela. I just have some rubber duckies right here. Hidden behind my dry erase markers, I have all of my Archie comics. I used to read Archie comics every time we would get on a plane and those are all the ones that I could find. So I have a bunch of my Archie comics, then I have a bunch of coloring books, and then I have a couple more random magazines like Architectural Digest, which I'm definitely getting more into, and then some Vogue, and then this is just a binder full of random stuff. We have finally made it to the bottom shelf. This is all camera equipment. GoPro, my mom's old film camera, and then I also have my new microphone that I just got for recording in here. And in this bin over here, I just have a bunch of random writing stuff. This is a little GoPro stand, my Beats headphones case, all of my portable chargers. Here I have, I was on the school newspaper in high school and I saved every edition that I ever wrote on. So I have all of our school new newspapers from high school. Shout out Eagle Eye. The oldest issue I have, this might even be from my freshman year, I don't know how time works. The December 2016 issue of the Eagle's Eye. All the way up to May 2019. And then my favorite that I'll just show you guys now because I think Every April, we do an April Fool's edition of the paper, and I think this was my favorite. And then last but not least, these last two shelves, I have all of my French notes that I've literally ever taken, and my AP study book, review and practice, dictionaries, all everything French. This whole shelf is literally French. This glass jar full of coins. I have gold and silver pins that I put on my map, which is in another coin room, and the silver is for places that I have been, and the gold is for places that I want to go. This box over here is full of all of my music stuff, so it has my mic, my cord, picks, capos, sheet music. All right, guys, so that is going to conclude this bookshelf tour. I hope you guys enjoyed. One series that I do want to give an honorable mention to is the... Wow, I don't remember. I don't remember the name of the series, but I remember all of the books in it, and I know that Tom Holland is going to be in one of the movies that they're making. It's The Knife of Never Letting Go, The Ask and the Answer, and Monsters of Men. Literally one of my favorite series, and I always forget about it because I had it on my Kindle 
when I was younger and I didn't I don't have like the physical copies of the books but I remember really liking that series so if you guys are looking for something to read that is also another series that I would recommend I hope you guys enjoyed this little bookshelf tour today it was really fun for me to film I love talking about reading and I plan to get more into it I don't have a lot more of adult books but I'm kind of in that in-between stage where I don't really want to read YA anymore, like new YA books. Um, most of the stuff that I read is for comfort and nostalgia, but I also don't want to read really dense, boring adult books. Sorry, adults. If you guys have any reading recommendations, leave them in the comments below. I would love to see them. Um, and again, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next week in next week's video.